This year's edition of the Rose City Rivalry taking center stage at the Child Center on the University of Portland's campus. The Pilots hosting crosstown rival Portland State out of the big sky. Crucial non-conference showdown with WCC and big sky play looming. Good afternoon, everybody. And shots to him by my broadcast partner, good friend. That's Jennifer Mountain, former standout at Gonzaga in the WCC coaching ranks as well. Brenna Green will join us later. All right, let's talk about this game. Both clubs looking to get back into the win column after losing their last games. And then when you factor in the rivalry aspect, it's going to be fun. Yeah, great opportunity for both squads, like you talked about, but two very different ball clubs. Portland State having a lot of success this season so far, but very young. They've got to do a good job of handling the pressure. And then, like you said, Portland State did not have a great half against Washington State the other night. They need a great bounce pack performance and get themselves back on track. The Pilots will be without Lucy Cochran, that rim protector, that shot block extraordinaire with the foot injury. Yeah, big loss for them not having her in the, in the game. Just the rim protector, like you said, defense, she just changes the field for them, obviously rotation-wise, but another opportunity for somebody else to step up with her out today. All right, so who is that pilot who could step up? Well, I think Maisie Burnham is going to play a bigger role. She's got a great mid-range game. She's been super solid this season. She's the second leading scorer right now and rebounder on the squad. She defends. She makes things happen. She's great in transition. She's got to have more of a collective group effort from, you know, the rest of the club following her right from the get-go. You love how Portland State has bounced back after last year. They're playing really well. Esmeralda Morales, they call her Esme. She is something. She really is. She's special. I've, I've had a chance to see her play quite a bit. She's a dynamic guard. She's a great floor leader. She's shooting 45% from the three. She's mm. crafty. She can create. She gets in the paint. She's poised. And Portland State needs a great offensive performance from her tonight. All right. This rivalry series, we like to call it the tail of the tape. The Pilots certainly dominating. But, you know, lately, Portland State has had some luck, although the Pilots did win last year's matchup. Yeah, and you know, you look at the stats, and, and like I said, they're two different ball clubs. Um, Really important, I think, Portland State comes in right from the get-go, handling the pressure and the press that Portland's going to apply. Shooting the ball pretty well, both teams, but it'll be rebounding, and it'll be execution in the half court. Man, I love rivalry games, and our crosstown rivalry fits the bill. Portland hosting Portland State at the Child Center. Bring it on. Lineups and opening tip coming up next. Rain letting up for the moment here in the Rose City. We've got a great rivalry game ready to go at the Child Center. The Portland Pilots hosting Portland State non-conference affair. The Pilots out of the WCC and, of course, Portland State from the big sky. Starting lineups looking like this. You know, Portland State featuring the same starters every single game, Jennifer Mountain. We talked about Morales, but, oh, don't take your eye off of Lewis. Yeah, really, really. Three-point specialist. She can get out and go in transition. She's got to be really good for them from the three-point line tonight for them to have a chance. Kai Tuu will get the start. Cochran not playing with the foot injury. And Haley Anders, we just cannot overstate how invaluable it is to have her back in the starting lineup. And able to play more minutes each game as this season goes on. And, you know, she's really just kind of getting her feet wet, getting Getting comfortable after that knee injury and it, this is going to be a good test for her just with all the pressure and the pace of this game. 
third member of our broadcast crew, the incomparable Brenna Green, is going to talk a little bit about Haley Andrews and then some bad news scenarios in terms of injuries for the pilots. Brenna? Yeah, as you guys mentioned, Lucy Cochran out for this game with a foot injury. However, Andrews, we're going to start seeing her more and more with this Portland Pilots team. Last game against WSU, she played about eight minutes more than what she was expected to. That was her fourth game back from tearing her ACL last season. Midway through the game, the trainer looked at head coach Michael Meek and said, hey, she looks good out there. I think we can push these minutes a little bit tonight. Expect her to be around the 25-minute mark. Also guard Kelsey Lindsay back in this Portland Pilots lineup tonight after having to sit out that game against WSU as well with a hand injury. Back to you guys. Awesome stuff, Brenna. Thank you so much. Looking forward to hearing you throughout the game. All right, we're moments away from tip. The Vikings wearing their road greens at four and three. The Portland Pilots home whites with the purple trim and piping at five and five. Both teams coming off of losses. Bounce back opportunity for both and we are underway. Well, I think the first few minutes here are going to be very crucial and just the pace for both squads and turnovers. They play similar style defense and this is going to be crucial. Ball poke checked away. Andrews looking to go immediately down low to Fowler single coverage, you bet. And, and this is going to be a point of emphasis as well for Portland State is being able to defend inside. They just don't have the overall size uh, that Portland does. Huge mismatch in terms of the size advantage for these Portland Pilots. Good dump down low, good hands, tag team. Shear is slow to get up, so the numbers aren't there for the Pilots. Burnham and Shear trailing, and the Pilots getting settled into their offense. Good patience, obviously didn't have numbers there, but uh, I would expect, especially Portland State, early to get the ball out of Fowler's hands if they can, whether it's a double team or guards just dumping down. Good interior defense, putting a little body on Fowler to force that miss. Uh, sorry, both teams tonight, you're gonna see some matchup zone, different zone looks. Where offensively, I think the perimeter game may be a huge key for both squads. Who shoots the ball better? Haley'd love to have that one right at the cup. Love to have it back, rimming out. I do like her taking that. She wasn't doing that a week ago, so that's a good sign for the Pilots. Lewis and Morales will tee it up from beyond the arc. They've been white hot lately from distance. Yeah, they're number one and two in the big sky right now from the three-point line. And like I said in the open, I really like this Morales kid. Just really poised for a sophomore. Ogele rimming out, one and done. Good job on the boards by the Pilots. Haley Andrew, Andrews draws the contact. Fitzgerald picks up that foul, her first, team's first. And JMO Haley Andrews showing some aggressive attacking style early in this ball game. And I think you love to see that. There's that little out-of-bounds flip that they get so often. <laughs> Tight quarters there between Andrews and Fowler. Nice job by Portland State. I just think you see her take those aggressive moves to the rim that she's just getting more comfortable and comfortable. Extended minutes the other night. And, you know, just getting her ready for league play. 2 nothing. Pilots with that opening bucket. Nothing doing for Portland State. Fitzgerald with eight on the shot clock brings it out. Portland State looking to get something going. Fitzgerald might just have to jack it up. Great job by Shear to close out and block that shot. Shot clock violation. Good close out on the three-point shot. Right now, you know, right then, Portland State doing a nice job of moving the basketball just a little bit too deep in that clock. Maybe look to attack to get to the middle of the paint. Portland losing to Washington State at home the other night, 69-63. They you know. led by as many as 19 in the second quarter, had a lot of double-digit leads, and then the droughts, and you know they really want to come away with the win tonight. Yeah, that was a heartbreaker. I mean, the first quarter might have been the best first quarter they've had all season long, and like you said, too many droughts. Esme brings it out. Morales. They've done a nice job of taking the ball out of her hand so far. Shovel pass inside. O'Gelly gets it down to a piece. And we talk about droughts right now, Portland, and a little bit over two and a half minute drought. 0 of 4 from the field. 
Pilots scoring right out of the shoots to open this game and nothing doing since then and have had some high percentage looks. Burnham dumps it inside. Fowler, wild shot, and she'll draw the foul. Alex trying to mop up her own miss. Well, and I think if you're Burnham right there, you got to shoot that little mid-range jumper. Uh, Portland State seems to be packing it in a little bit, taking, trying to take Alex Fowler out of it and make them shoot the perimeter jumpers. You know, it's going to open up for the inside game if you can start hitting a couple jumpers from the three-point line. Ogele ticketed with that foul as Uhila and Schultz check in for Portland State. Kaitu'u. And here's Burnham. Nicely done and aggressive to the hole. Great take. Mid-range jumper, nice little pull up. Kiss off the glass. That breaks the three and a half minute drought for the Pilots and they take the 4-2 lead. Low scoring game out of the shoots. We're in the first quarter here at the Child Center. Pilots, Vikings, Crosstown rivals going at it. Well, we talked about the pressure that Portland State's gonna have to do a good job and right there, quick little turnover trying to force that. Zone pass, not a bad look. I just don't think Fitzgerald was ready for it. Portland State's got four turnovers right now in this first quarter. They just can't afford not to get shots at the basket. They have got to value each possession as head coach Chelsea Gregg emphasizes. And you see him come out with a little 2-2-1, more of a tempo press. They'll mix it up, half court, three quarter. They'll extend it and try to trap. But like I said, both teams really play a lot of similar style in that half court zone. Meek and Frawley on the floor for the Pilots. 10 on the shot clock, there's Frawley. Sheer dumps it down low, Kaitu'u, traffic, kick. Good defense by Portland State. We'll go the other way. Really nice job, and again, they're, this kind of pack mentality of making the post players uncomfortable. You know, Liana's got to go up with that. Two, two feet, you know, in the restricted circle, they've got to go up and score the basketball. Bruno checking in for the Pilots. Yeah, Portland State really packing it in inside, and wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Right now, you know, you look at a, a stat line, and they're not shooting it particularly well from the three-point line. I think they have decent shooters. But right now, as a team, just not at a high clip. Bruno picks up the first personal, first team foul. Nice job by Morales. You know, it's not going to show up in the box score. Did a good job handling the heat and beat, beating that 10-second violation. Well, and I think that's going to be a key for the whole game is Portland relies on their full court pressure. And right now, that's not where they're having trouble or turning the basketball over. It's in the half court. Morales comes in, leading this club at 16.6 .6 points. High off the cup and in for Fitzgerald. That was a great aggressive take to the yeah, rim. Fitzgerald. Nice little left hand off the glass. Wow, kissed it off that window, so four apiece. Fitzgerald very aggressive and found just a smidge in a room, J-Mo. Fowler, wide open, misses the little eight-footer. Morales. Takes a hit from Bruno, keeps on a chugging. No cutter there, ill-advised pass by Schultz. Kaitu'u, Fowler, great hands and finish. Uh, it looked like she got hit on that pass. Lucky to get it all the way through, and here comes that pressure again. Four points now for Fowler. There's the heat, picking up the dribble and just flinging it, and here's McCartney down low. Schultz has got to hit that shot. McCartney has got to hit that shot, and here come yep. the Pilots. Good job on the offensive glass, just didn't score the putback. 6-4, Portland with the lead, under four minutes to go in this opening quarter. Meek going to the bench. Greg as well. Well, and you really, you look at both squads right now, and you know, it's one or two people scoring the basketball. And that right there, you know, is an example. Portland's really just got to start hitting from the perimeter to open up opportunities for their post play. Boy, but Fowler had a huge mismatch. Uhila was on her, and the Pilots couldn't get her down low. And that's a great little look for Schultz. That mid-range, yeah, that mid-range game, you know, that little WCC mark and a key has been a spot where teams have really exposed Portland a little bit at times. Just a little mismatch, and that's a you know, free throw line jumper. You don't want to give too many of those away. Here's your zone. 
Sometimes it looks like a matchup zone, yep. kind of a junk zone on occasion. Frawley and the walk, and Portland State again packing the interior. Yeah, I think Portland right now is just passing up the first opportunity and trying to take it into the paint, in, into the post a little bit further than they need to. So the pilot's a little chilly at this point, six apiece. Fowler always coming to play, leads the way for the pilots. But I'll tell you, the Vikings have come to play. Welcome back to the Child Center. Portland Pilot head coach Mike Meek having a chat with Maisie Burnham. Fourth year on the bluff for Mike Meek. A couple of 20 win seasons. Has just done such a great job making this program a player in the WCC. Absolutely tremendous job. I mean, the culture. He's got so much depth right now. Even with a couple injuries, they have so much depth. Picks second in the WCC right now behind Gonzaga in the preseason poll. And really talking to him, he, he likes where this group is. His record, you know, they've played a lot of Pac-12 quality opponents. Just getting ready, that non-conference schedule, getting ready for conference play is, is a big key. I think Mike will be the first one to tell you, you talk about those Pac-12 opponents in Washington State in the building just the other night. That would have been a huge win for the Pilots, one they feel like they let get away. And let's see how they're able to continue to hold pace against Portland State. Yeah, and right now, just both teams not scoring the ball offensively very well. It's kind of a defensive, you know, matchup here. Lewis back on the floor for Portland State, seven on the shot clock. Uhila dumps it. Here's Lewis. Step back. Three. She's got a quick release and can really score from the three-point line. Look at running the floor as Sewell, who had just checked in. Ball goes off her hands. Good idea by the Pilots. It is, but, you know, you got to know, you know, where she's at. If she does catch that ball, she's going to be too far under the rim. Right now, Meek's got to pull that one back out and get a quality offensive possession. Burnham back on the floor for the Pilots. Trouble here for Morales. She finds Lewis. Jada's got to hurry. Not in time. Good defense by the Pilots. They hang their hat on this stuff. And that's what they've been trying to do all, all game long. That's a six turnover for the po Portland State right now. And really the first time they've turned it over versus the full court press, which again is something that Portland really tries to get people turned over in the full court. So Meek and Burnham just kind of losing sight of each other in terms of who was cutting where. Five turnovers in the game right now for Portland. Andrews back onto the court for the Pilots. Six apiece, 2.08 left to go in this low scoring first quarter. Morales hawked, there's the pick. Drew Andrews, yep. And, and right now I think the length of Portland has caused the turnovers in the full court with Morales just not being able to see. 
Andrews with the pick all the way to the rim and ends nearly a three minute drought for the Pilots. They lead it 8 6. And this was a point of emphasis talking with Coach Meek the other day. They struggled at, against Washington State. They had three or four like extended minute times where they did not score the basketball. I think we added up almost 19 minutes. They did not have a field goal. Mm, mm, mm. The droughts were plentiful against the Pilots against Washington State and we're even up at eight apiece. Again, PSU hanging around, J-Mo. They really are, and I'm telling you, this, this group right here, you know, they are very young, but they're all sophomores now. They were freshmen last year, they all became sophomores, and this kid right here, Morales, really is a gamer. Takes it right at Burnham. Follow-up is there by Uhila, and look who's leading. They have a lot of confidence. They're playing well together. They've got some pieces that are pretty good. And you know, this is a dangerous time. You know, you let somebody hang around. Again, the confidence level just gets higher and higher. And they really feel like they can play with anybody. Portland State leading 10 to eight. And that is without Lewis or Morales scoring at this point. And they are scorers. They really are. Like I said, they're one and two in the big sky from the three point line. Uh, Morales is their leading scorer at over 16 points a game. And right now they're just being facilitators. And we're kind of in this defensive juggernaut. Like who's gonna, you know, outsmart the other opponent? So again, it's Lewis at 14 points a pop. Morales at 16.6 points a pop. Haven't scored yet. And the Vikings still look up at the scoreboard and say, hey, we're up by a deuce. Yeah, I, I just think if you're Portland right now, one of your perimeter players has to step up and contribute. You know, if you don't have point production from the three-point line or, or mid-range area, it makes it easy for an opponent just to pack it in, and that's what they're doing. And you see Lindsay coming in after that timeout. She's a three-point threat. Fowler getting bumped by Schultz. Nine on the shot clock. Le oh, I was going to say, welcome back. Lindsay looked like it was true coming off her hand. Coming off that hand injury. So Sewell picks up that foul, her first, team's third. And Coach Meek really likes the ability that he has seen from Sewell in practice and talking about giving, you know, obviously with Cochran out today, gonna get some opportunities to maybe play a little bit more minutes and get her feet wet. Got to mention Lucy Cochran, who leads the WCC in blocks, not able to go today with the foot injury. Flip inside. Boy, McCartney didn't know what to do with it, so with six on the shot clock, Morales. Lewis short. Ball into the hands of Andrews. Dumps it inside, poke checked away by Schultz. And good transition D by Portland State getting back, not, not allowing transition points. I like how aggressive they've been. They've gone to the offensive glass, almost got it here, but doing a great job not getting it and getting back. Eight seconds left in this first quarter. Burnham dealing into the double team and still handles it. And that'll do it for the first quarter. Burnham's bucket drawing the Pilots even. 10 apiece, low scoring first quarter to be sure. Both clubs kind of feeling each other out, having some bursts, having some droughts. But we're set up for a close, close game and that's just the way we like it. 10 apiece, second quarter coming.
Welcome back to the Child Center, Portland State. The hometown Portland Pilots tied up at 10 apiece going into the second quarter. Time to bring Brenna Green back with us to talk about that deep pilot bench. Brenna? Yeah, Portland comes into this game with nine players averaging between 15 and 25 minutes. Ten if you count Lucy Cochran. That's pretty rare for a program to be playing that many players. When I asked Michael Meek about this deep roster, he said expect for his rotation to start narrowing as we start getting to league play. One of the reasons why this team has had such a large rotation is because of Haley Andrews working her way back from injury. Nick says he envisions both Andrews and Alex Fowler to be around the 32 to 35 minute range in the next few weeks. Back to you guys. Thanks, Brenna. Appreciate that. And, you know, those are minutes that those two players are used to playing. How about Esme Morales playing basically 40 minutes a game for Portland State? That's nutty. It, that's a lot of minutes. Then we talked to Coach Greg, and she, you know, talked about the fact of trying to be able to spell her just a tiny bit. Second quarter underway. Contact is there. Andrews finishes all the same. She's got four. That's a good take and a strong take. And again, that'll give her just a little bit of confidence. Andrews is a type of player who's used to initiating contact, likes the contact, plays through it. Coming off that ACL, good to see her aggressive again. Fowler running. Fowler finishing. And one baby well and that's what Portland needs is their defense fueling the offense and transition buckets getting a steal on the half court getting it up to Fowler and again Fowler does such a great job of running the floor and giving those guards an opportunity to see her Fitzgerald picks up her second foul teams first as the second quarter is underway that's going to be a big foul right there she's a kid that really can score inside and out plays really hard on defense Plays 32 minutes a game. Yep. So she's on the floor a lot. She's got two. She's going to have to be. Whoa! Haley with the pick. Well, and this is where Portland State has struggled. They, you know, putting it together for multiple quarters at a time. They'll play really, really well. And then right off the bat in a minute, you go, you know, down seven. Biggest lead of the game for the Pilots who start this second quarter on fire. Yeah, their defensive pressure has really picked up its intensity level. There's another turnover. Uhila just throws it right into the midst of Burnham. Fowler tries to save it, but right into the midst of Uhila. And Uhila will just kind of walk it up and look for some help. And Portland State with 10 turnovers mm. in the, the game thus far. They average 15. They can't afford this many in just a quarter and a quarter. Air ball. Yesaki checking in for Portland State. Shear back onto the floor for the Pilots. Well, you, you look at the difference in the game, and it's 11 points off of Portland State's 10 turnovers, mm, mm, which tells mm. you that even Portland in the half court is not that efficient right now. It's their defense that's fueling their offensive lead right now. How many times have we said that about the Pilots in terms of defense turning into offense? Absolutely. It's one of their biggest keys, and... Oh, I thought she was going to take that. Forced. Burnham throws it away. Here's Morales. I'd love to see her up fake there and take a one dribble pull up. Portland on, you know, has eight turnovers of their own. Morales, Lewis still scoreless. The one-two punch of Portland State. Almost another cough up. Ten seconds now for Morales and the Vikings. Splitting the difference right into the hands of Kaitu, and here comes Haley. Sheer. Wow, Morales taking one for the team, will go the other way, and she gets up slowly. Yeah, she got hit hard. Again, smart player right there. Sheer got herself going a little too quick and up in the air. Draws the offensive charge right there, but she took a hard hit. Sheer's first foul of the game. Pilots first of the quarter as Meek checks back in for Andrews. And the Pilots not able to extend the lead with three turnovers in less than two minutes. Lewis. Tough shot. Can't get the friendly bounce. Burnham with the rebound and here comes Portland. That's a good look. Sheer, wide open, and cans it. Big stick. And I 
I'll tell you, that's huge for the Pilots. Again, if they can start hitting from the perimeter, uh, looks like Fowler got hit in the face. It's slow to come down to the floor, and yeah, she's holding that left eye. Boy, I'll tell you, Ogele really needed that, and she yells out a victory cry right there. She'll go to the line as she draws the foul from Kaitu. Just a good one-on-one -on -one move from the block. And Portland State's gonna need some inside presence to eliminate some of that pressure off of those hot shooting guards. Ogele out of Chicago misses the free throw, but it results in a wide open look. Morales is denied and here come the pilots. Uh, that's one that she does not miss often. If you're Portland, you just cannot give up an offensive glass off of a free throw. First free throw of the game. Frawley in for the pilots. Pilots work in the perimeter, now going into that short corner. 10 on the shot clock. Meek will fire up the three, front rim and off. Good job of overloading the zone by Portland. Again, just not able to hit the three-point shot. 20 to 12, six minutes left to go in this second quarter. Can Lewis get on the board? Not yet. Portland State doing a good job flying around defensively. Kai Tu, great footwork and can't finish at the rim. Oh, that's a great move to the rim. Just fell a little bit short, falling away from the basket instead of going to it. And Kai Tu with the frustration foul, her second team's third. Nifty move, just couldn't quite finish. Yeah, you love the move. You don't like the silly foul afterwards yeah. if you're Coach Meek especially with Cochran being out today. Good steal by Shear. so long. Even better hands inside, Yesaki. So Shear picks up her second, team's fourth. Well, right now, I mean, five and a half minutes to go in the second, and there's 21 turnovers mm. in the half by combination of both squads, just not taking care of the basketball. Both defenses wanting their opponents to feel uncomfortable, turn the ball over, that's what's been happening. Another turnover, can Fowler save it? Meek was looking for the foul to be called on contact against Fowler. Instead, Portland State kind of gets a gift and will retain possession. Yeah, I, I think he has a, a right there to be a little bit upset with that. So Lewis scoreless at this point. Morales scoreless at this point. They combined for 30 points for Portland State. And they haven't been able to crack the code yet. What I like though is they're not forcing the issue either. Ball off the hands of Uhila. So Pilots ball, 5.09 left, leading by eight. At one point, they led by 10. Low scoring game. No Lucy Cochran. Not able to go today with the foot injury. Changes a lot of the dynamic of Portland's offense and defensive schemes. Fowler, patient. She'll draw the foul against Ogele. She's got two. Actually a really smart one-on-one -on -one move by Fowler there because Portland State ended up matched up when that ball went to the high post. And normally they're looking for a high-low option, took it away, just patient and got the foul. So we'll take a quick break. The Pilots leading Portland State 20 to 12, 448 left to go in this second quarter. Pilots looking to keep on keeping.
Portland State in the house, trailing Portland 20 to 12, 448 left to go in the second quarter. You know, JMO, last year at the Viking Pavilion, the Pilots defeated Portland State 71-54, led by 12 at the half, and did the Pilots. And one of the stats that really jumped off, uh, jumped out at me, uh, 30 of Portland's points came off of 21 Portland State turnovers last year. And right now, the Pilots making hay off the Portland State cough-ups as well. Yeah, they got 11 points right now off of their turnovers. And, that, and that's what we've talked about. The pressure that Portland applies has been a huge key for their success over the four years. Right now, just both teams struggling to score the basketball. Late whistle on Schultz. She bumped Burnham. So the foul is going to go against Schultz, her first, team's third. Burnham will go to the line, the transfer out of Eastern Washington, a 70% free throw shooter. Coming off of 14 points and a couple of triples against Washington State the other night. She has been huge in a starting role. Solid. I mean, she's just been super solid. She could score from the three-point line. Doesn't force it. Great mid-range game. Super active. She's long, so she, she can post up. Right there, you see her trying to go to the, the block area. Makes it a little bit hard of a mismatch, I think, for Portland State. The lead is 10, equaling the biggest lead of the game for the Pilots. 4.30 left to go. Rimming out. Trying to hang in there as Lewis and is able to grab that Offensive board, it's just been slow, slow, slow cooking for Portland State's offense. They just haven't been able to do anything in this quarter. And I think Lewis has got to go up with that one. Portland State has scored two points in this second quarter. Two points. Well, they've turned the ball over a little bit higher clip this second quarter, not getting the looks that they probably want. I think that, you know, free throw line jumper right there, any chance they get it, They've got to take it, and they've got 13 turnovers right mm. now in the half. And again, Portland State averaging 15, but already 13. Morales. Tag team by Meek and Frawley. And they've gone almost three minutes without a bucket. You can see in the middle of that zone right there, right there, a little one-on-one, -on -one, but that's a good shot. McCartney does a nice job to create even a little more space and much needed bucket for Portland State. Yeah, and I think that's an area right there that you can expose Portland in that zone a little bit at times. And that's a shot she's got to take and one she can make. Burnham splitting the difference. Can't get it home. Was able to get her body through those two defenders but just couldn't score at the rim. Yeah, they went on, you know, tried to get a little back screen off the zone. And just right now, struggling to score from the field. They haven't had a field goal in three and a half minutes. Mm. There's that, oh, good hands by Fowler. Schultz had some room if she would have just elevated for the jumper. Instead, throws it away. Fowler inside against Schultz. Uh -huh. I'll tell you, she really impresses me with how she works to get early position. And this is what Portland State can't afford to do. How about Meek with the pick, takes the contact, scores, and she'll go to the line. Those live ball turnovers lead to easy buckets for Portland, and that's the, the really the place right now that Portland has, six, has had success and excelled. It's not a half-court set. Three-point play for Meek. Portland State just churning out the turnovers. I mean, it, 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 it just, it's just been a sieve of cough-ups for Portland State. That's got to change. Biggest lead of the game for the Pilots. Nice job by Morales. She'll get it right back. Again, Esme scoreless. Jada Lewis scoreless. Well, you know, the thing about those turnovers, they're leading to easy buckets. For Portland, they got 16 points off of their turnovers. Mm. There's a good All right, right there. there's Lewis. That's what Portland State needs. Finally in the scorebook, cuts the lead to 10. First three of the game for Portland State, and again, she's she's got such a quick release. And she is a great shooter when she gets going. Fowler 
one on one and then into double coverage and still off the glass. She wanted an and one and scores. 11 now for Fowler in double figures again. She's got 10 double figure games this year. She is something to write home about. Turnover. Andrews, ball fake, throws it up, scores. We're going to negate the basket. Morales will take the charge. Andrews is going to be ticketed for that foul. We'll take a look at it. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good call. And, she, and Morales did just a nice job of anticipating her going to her left hand there. And held her ground. Credit Morales, who hasn't been able to score, but playing the tough defense on the other hand. Well, and Schultz will go to the line. Good find and a good take. But the, the thing about Morales, she's had the ball in her hand and had to really take all the pressure under her own wing there. She's the one basically one-on-one -on -one trying to create and break the press. So Schultz to the line, going into this toss, three for five on the year from the charity stripe. Look good there. I would say in the last few weeks, she's really done a nice job of defensively for the, the Vikings and, and offensively, I just think she's gotten a little bit more comfortable and she's a strong kid inside. Nice little mid-range jumper. Schultz to the bench. Winter Blanchard will check in for Portland State. A buck 31 left to go in this second quarter. Pilots with the 10 point lead. Turnovers absolutely killing Portland State at this point. And yet, if they can keep it to within 10, JMO, they'll feel okay about making some adjustments and maybe making a rally the rest of the way. Yeah, I mean, you're holding her, holding Portland under 30 points right now in the half. And the type of buckets that they've really given them off of the turnovers has been the biggest difference. You gotta make it tough for them in the half court, make them execute. Frawley wants right. it inside. Winter Blanchard pokes it away, and here comes Lewis. 105 left to go. Lewis tries to pick up the dribble and find someone. She does, and there's the foul on Fowler. Kind of a busted play, and fortunate that Fowler fouls Winter Blanchford. You're right. I mean, it was a complete busted play, almost a turnover by Lewis in that trap over there, comes loose and Fowler just in the wrong spot at the wrong time. So Fowler will have a seat as she picks up her second personal foul. Back on the floor, Uhila. Yeah, that's probably smart. Fitzgerald, you know, she's got two fouls right now. You don't want her to pick up a third here with a minute left in the half. Winter Blanchard, her first free throw attempt of the season, it's good. The sophomore and transfer out of Centralia College. Coach Greg really has done a nice job of bringing in pieces. These kids really work hard. They've bought in. The culture's really good. They work extremely hard. I mean, you talk about the Fab Four. You know, this group really has grown over the last year, and she's got to be pleased with their, their progress. Frawley, Andrews. Too easy. Well, and that's one thing she's so good at. I mean, when you can post up your point guard like that, get easy point paint production, that's awesome. Eight points now for Andrews. Season high for Andrews coming off that ACL injury last year. Morales just can't buy a break. We're going to go the other way. Shot clock off. Game clock showing you 20 seconds right now. You're smart. you got to hold it for one. Don't want to give Portland State an opportunity to get a shot off in this Last part of the half. Pilots have been hot lately. Let's see what Frawley can do. Wow. Sewell just elevates. And it's a 12 point lead for the Portland Pilots. Nice job by Sewell off the bench. And that was a big stick to end the half. Really nice, you know, kind of, I thought she was gonna lose it for a second. 
And, you know, Coach Meek has talked about her ability to score the basketball and Portland inning the half, hitting their last five shots. And the Pilots doing a great job of taking advantage of all those turnovers, many of which were caused by Portland's great defense. Brenna Green standing by with Pilot head coach Mike Meek. Brenna? Mike, uh, you guys, last time I checked, had for 16 turnovers uh, to Portland State. Just how pleased are you with your guys' defense so far? You know, I, I, I feel great about our effort. I think our defensive effort has really done a great job. And now we got to keep trying to put it together for two halves. I mean, that's something that we're starting to put more more parts of games together. But, but I feel like we need to come out and have a strong second. It definitely a strong start to the second half. Slow start to that first quarter, but that second quarter over 20 points. Just how pleased were you with that production as well? Oh, you know, Portland State's playing really hard. They're playing good defense, too. So, it, you know, it took us a while to make some adjustments. And you know, I felt like we did some great things, started to push the ball and transition a little bit more. And, uh, you know, it's just it, we know rivalry the game like this. And, it, you know, two port schools from Portland, it's going to be a battle all the way through. Thank you so much, Coach Meek. Thank you. Back to you guys. Brenna, thank you so much. Thank you, Coach. All right. 33-21. Pilots leading crosstown rival Portland State. Biggest lead of the game was 13, but the Pilots will take a 12-point cushion into the locker room and think, okay, we get this offense going, it could be even better and bigger. I love the fact that higher education can be transformative. It can change someone's trajectory of their life. And so it's my hope that the University of Portland, we are the transformative Catholic university in the West Coast. I was born and raised in the great state of New Jersey. I am the youngest person in my family. I have some amazing parents who have sacrificed a lot to provide an education for me and my brother. You know, they, we grew up knowing you're going to get your education, you're going to go to church, and anything is possible as you go forward in your life. Well, my name is Rob Kelly, and I am the president of the University of Portland. We were simply thrilled when Dr. Kelly accepted the opportunity to come to the University of Portland. We spent hours, weeks, months 
discerning this important decision, and he was exactly what this university needs moving forward. Hey guys, nice to see you. I think you've already seen that on campus already. Dr. Kelly's everywhere. He's ubiquitous. Uh, he's energetic. I think he's a tremendous role model. His experience in higher education at this university and other universities will serve him so very well. There's no one more prepared to lead this university into its next great chapter here on the bluff. One. This is my first day with lots of students on campus in a, in a physical format. The students are back and this is the beginning of it. It's like Christmas morning. Clearly a person that was able to build connections and relationships with people. His prior experiences, it was very intentional that Rob was preparing himself to one day hopefully have the opportunity to lead a Catholic university and I'm grateful that he chose us as much as we chose him. I've been so blessed to know him for over 24 years and one of the very first conversations we had we found out we both loved higher ed and he talked about I want to be a college president one day and it really struck me because my father was a college president and so I saw a lot of similarities of somebody that I you know greatly admire and love more than anything he is like the cheerleader for our family my children, Alex and Addison, first they ground me completely. They give all of this work that I'm doing um, and everything meaning. To be such a collaborator, communicator, and somebody that really deeply believes in justice, it seemed like those were the things that he just naturally is. I have been extremely blessed to have different people in my life. People like Sister Frances, she was my fourth grade school teacher. I remember those little lessons that she taught us, and I bring that with me into the work that I do now. My message to students would be that they're loved want to walk with them and accompany them as they go off and do amazing things in the world. And we're always going to be there. It's about community, and we're going to help them to get connected as we go forward in life. Welcome home, and go Pilots. Dr. Kelly, on behalf of the entire Board of Regents, we are thrilled that you are finally here on the bluff. Dr. Kelly and his family, so grateful that you've become a part of the University of Portland. Can't wait to see all of the fantastic things that we can accomplish. Welcome Dr. Kelly to Villa Maria Hall. Welcome Dr. Kelly to the University of Portland. We are so proud of you and wish you the best of luck at University of Portland. Congrats Dad, I'm becoming president. I'm really proud of you. Every day, remember where your strength lies. God and heaven are below our feet and above our heads, and so always look up and remember that you are loved, and you can do this. Congratulations. Congratulations, President Kelly. God bless you.
time in the Rose City at the Child Center on the campus of the University of Portland. The Pilots leading crosstown rivals Portland State 33-21 at the break. Great to have you at the Child Center. Ann and Jen, delighted to have you with us. This was a game that the Pilots really ruled in terms of turning these guys over, Portland State, and doing something with it at the rim. Yeah, did a great job. They got 16 points off of the 16 turnovers. That's a great one-to-one -one ratio right there. And really, I mean, right now, transition buckets, they have 10 points. They have 24 points in the paint. The one thing I think that, you know, listening to Coach Beak go in before halftime is can they put two halves together? And I really think they really – you need to focus on perimeter shooting in this second half. Alex Fowler leading the way, as you would expect, for the Portland Pilots. She's in double figures yet again and was dominant down low. She did a nice job, combination moves, running the ball, running in transition. She does such a great job of getting early position. You know, she's their bread and butter inside and really strong, versatile, like we've talked about. She gets steals in the press, and, and, and it's been a bright, an absolute bright spot for them in this game. Lucy Cochran not able to go because of that foot injury. So a lot on Fowler, and she's delivering the goods. She really is. And right now, I mean, Portland State kind of had that pack mentality, making it even more difficult for her to score. But she's been strong. She's stayed with it. And again, points in transition with her have been terrific in this first half. Again, leading everybody with 11 points. Now let's take a look at some team stats, JMO. Yeah, I mean, you look at both teams struggling from the three-point line. Rebounds very, very close. That turnover number right now for Portland State really has got to be the focus for them coming in this beginning of this third quarter. First three minutes I think are crucial and just field goal percentage overall has not been great for both squads. I mean 53% I'm sorry for Portland. Nice job from the two point line but really I think perimeter shooting will be a huge factor in opening up the paint for the pilots. Portland really separating themselves in that second quarter, shooting better and taking advantage of those turnovers. Yeah, and it was points off of, you know, the turnovers into transition that lead into easy buckets. They're not having to run a lot of half-court sets or against the zone, so easy buckets obviously make it a little bit higher percentage shooting, and they did a nice job of taking advantage of the turnover situation. All right, so we're just a few minutes from the start of the third quarter here at the Child Center. The Pilots leading the Vikings 33-21 let's look to seal the deal with a strong second half we'll see what kind of rally the bikes have in them come on back
Child Center, Portland State trailing 33-21. Brenna had a chance to catch up with Portland State head coach Chelsea Gregg moments ago. Brenna? Yeah, Chelsea Gregg says she's very not happy with how this PSU team has handled Portland's press. They practiced for this. They knew it was coming, and yet they just cannot seem to beat it. Another thing I asked her about was Esme Morales, who currently has no points. She, I said, how do you get her more involved? She said, well, we got to get it across half court first. Back to you guys. Yeah, I hear you, Brenna. Great point. And Coach Greg is right. Well, you know, she's the primary ball handler versus this press, and when she's giving it up, it's being turned over, so she's not getting a lot of opportunity. If you're Portland State, I think you need to get her in great hands right there, right off the bat, causing a turnover. Unfortunate push, inadvertent push by Burnham, her second, team's first. And, and what I was going to say is you, you look at the stat sheet and all their point production for Portland State has been the bigs, and typically that is not their strong suit, so the guards need to really get involved early. Yeah, this is a guard-oriented Portland State club. Lewis has only three points. Morales, as Brenna told you, is scoreless, and they combine for some 30 points a game. Separation from Lewis short on that three-point attempt. Burnham takes one to the chops, and Fitzgerald now has three fouls. And, and that's a quick one, you know, unfortunate for her first 30 seconds of the, the second half off of the kind of hustle play of her trying to get an offensive board. Fitzgerald, one of those high volume minute kids, plays 32 minutes a game, gives you nine points a game, and turnover, good hands by Morales. And that's two times in a row that Morales has caused a deflection or got a turnover against Portland. And if you're Coach Meek, you know, he's been talking about this all season long, taking care of the basketball and eliminating silly turnovers. Pilots not taking care of business, turning it over consecutive possessions, and Portland State returns the favor. Great position. Letting him play. Fowler knocked around a little bit. Ogele, though, you got to hand it to her. She just stayed tall. And there it is for Lewis, short corner three. Well, and, and she can get going in a hurry. So if you're Portland, you certainly don't want to give her quality looks like that in transition. Lewis now with six. 33-24, Pilots. Portland looking for its first points of this third quarter. Again, you can see Portland State just kind of Packing it in a little bit, begging those guards to pull it from the three-point line. Kaitu just kind of throws it up. Garbage bucket, not quite there for Burnham. Unfortunate there for Portland State, so the Pilots will get another crack at it. Yeah, and pretty good team defense right there. Late in the shot clock, off-balance shot. You know, that's what they want, just not collapsing and getting the rebounding. Fowler on that inbounds play, so tricky, draws the foul. Lewis picks up her first, team's second. Andrews will get it right back, wants that baseline. Looking for a cutter there, Shear steps into the mid-range, front rim and off, Great follows a run, shot is Emmy Shear. Great follow. Five points, four boards now for Shear. And Shear will pick up her third foul. Second team foul. So Bruno will come in for Shear. 35 24. We're early in the third quarter. The Pilots' biggest lead was 13 in the second quarter. Picking up that dribble, danger zone. Yeah, you don't want to pick it up so close to the half court line. McCartney is going to give it up. Here's Lewis. Nine on the shot clock now for Cinco. Boy, that has got to feel good for Esme Morales, her first points of the game. And first really clean look from the three-point line that she's had, and she was shaking her hand. I thought she got hurt in that last little progression right there. Obviously didn't hurt her on that shot. 
35-27, Portland State desperately needs Lewis and Morales to get hot. That's how the bread is buttered for the Vikings. Dumping it down low, Fowler picking up that dribble, and here's Bruno. Watch three seconds, Portland State asking for three. Instead, Bruno tees up the three, and it's... First points of the game for Bruno. One of the better three-point shooters on this pilot club. Doesn't take a whole lot of them, but her percentage is great. Well, timely, too. I mean, she's really worked on that in the offseason. Oh, nice pass. McCartney can't get it at the rim. One and done. Kai Tu is going to bring it up. Dumps it down low. Fowler misses inside. Ball pinged around. And here comes Portland State. Yeah, that's an unfortunate miss. So deep in the paint. It's exactly what the Pilots wanted. High, low. Quick hitter inside. It looked like for a second Kai Tu might have stumbled. Well, I think Portland State's done a nice job of making some adjustments. Much more poise on the offensive end, not turning it over. After that first couple minutes, they've kind of settled down here in the second half. Getting quality looks in the half court, and just bodying people up offensively. Flips it inside. Lewis will pick up her second. Team's third. Mismatch, and Fowler was all over that. Portland State's doing a nice job. The ball goes inside, and they're literally just matching up on the perimeter. So there's no cuts. There's nobody to go to. And post players are a little bit hesitant to just go and score. Meek and Fowler checking in for the Pilots as Fowler will tow the free throw line. She's one for one at the charity stripe. Portland doing a nice job from the free throw line. Just haven't had a lot of opportunities from the line. Four or five of five now for the game. So Fowler, who's just so consistent in every phase of the game, she's got 13. Again, her 10th double-figure game of the season. The lead is 11. And Burnham will pick up her third personal team's third. Well, you, you know, the thing about that foul and Shear's foul is all in full-court pressure, just anticipating a little bit, uh, maybe a step late and too much body. Schultzwood just checked in, will try to inbounds it, and does. Morales trying to avoid the double team. Nice split. Catch, shoot, short there by Fitzgerald. Nice job by Portland State attacking the offensive boards. Well, the thing about this Portland State team is they're going to compete for 40 minutes no matter what. Like I said, they've had some success this season so far. They're continuing to get better and grow. This group really believes in what they're doing in each other and love to play for each other. I mean, that's a great job of just crashing the glass. Uhila will toe the line as Burnham will sit down with her fourth personal foul. That's a big foul right there, having her go out this early in the half. Didn't put a body on anybody, just, just tried to jump over. Gets one of two, 40 to 30. Fowler's going to give it up. Again, no Lucy Cochran for the Pilots. Out today with that foot injury. Single coverage, Fowler steps in and will go to the line again. Quick to recognize the late double team coming, and she knows she's going to get fouled. Yeah, if, if you're going to stand behind Alex Fowler, you've either got to come with a double team super quick, or she's going to go one-on-one -on -one to the rim. They're drawing the foul just with the body. Ogele picks up her third foul. She'll take a seat. McCartney back on the floor. Ogelli at 6'3 with some size will have to sit. And now Fowler becomes even a tougher matchup, I Big think, time. for Portland State. Fowler having herself quite a game. Perfect from the free throw line is Fowler. 42-30. Pilots, it seems, holding on to that double team lead or double figure lead over and over, taking the punches by 
Portland State and delivering their own counterpunch. Fowler setting up camp down low. Three not there. Good block out and board by McCartney. Here comes Morales. That's a good look for Lindsay. Nice little pull up jumper. Almost an and one as Morales was fouled in the act of shooting. And uh, it'll be Frawley with that foul. Actually, we're going to give that one to Meek. Anyway, 42-30. Portland with the lead, but Morales will be on the free throw line when we come back. Portland State trying to hang in there. Forty-two thirty, Pilots leading crosstown rival Portland State. 4.53 left to go in this third quarter. The depth of the Pilots really showing today, J-Mo. Burnham in foul trouble, no Cochran with the foot injury, and yet the bench has been producing. Yeah, I mean, and that's what you're going to need when we talk about injuries and so forth. You know, somebody goes out, somebody's got to step up, and, you know, there's been multiple players that have done a nice job of contributing coming in off the bench. Bruno hitting that three just a minute ago, and um, Portland State playing really pretty even here this, this third quarter. Much better offensively, not turning the ball over as much. I like the adjustment that they've made is they've taken Esme a little bit out of the pressure in the full court trying to get it up. Other people are having to ha be the primary ball handlers that time. Morales, one of two. And the official score now gave that last foul to Bruno. It's her second, not Meek. So just want to make sure that you're up to speed there. Here comes the heat from Portland State. 42-31 pilots. Meek looking for some help. And he'll dump it to Bruno. Well, a little taste of their own medicine. Like I said, they're very similar defensively can mix it up there, trying to trap and make something happen. Fowler, the only starter on the floor right now for the Pilots. Here's Lindsay back from that hand injury. Fowler shucks off the double. Can't get it down low, follows up, you bet. I'll tell you, you can't go one-on-one -on, -one on the block with Fowler. Nice steal by Frawley right there. 17 points now for Fowler. Inside look not there. Another offensive rebound, but there's the quick hands of Uhila. 44-31. Portland State playing better, but still playing catch up. Floater not there. Inside board, and here comes Portland State. Oh. Fowler stumbles. Pilot turnover. Schultz doing a nice job of just kind of pulling the chair on that one defensively. But again, I think if you're Portland State and you want to get back into this ball game, you have got to do something of making Alex Fowler give the ball up and not allow her to go one-on-one -on, -one on the block. Nice stroke by Fitzgerald. The deuce. She's got four. 
44-33. Fitzgerald playing in foul trouble. Portland State needed that one. Fowler working so hard against Schultz. Ooh. She'll square up, and Schultz got her for sure. That's her second. That's a hard foul yep. right there. Team's fifth. Gosh, Alex is just getting pounded down low. That was a chiropractor right there. <laughs> that's still adjustment. Good move. Man. Ooh, that's a hard hit. Boy, it really is. Andrews back onto the floor for the Pilots. Pilots continue to be perfect from the free throw line. Nine for nine. Fowler doing yeoman's work at the charity stripe. Six for six. Make it seven for seven. And Fowler nearing her second 20-point game of the season. She'll take a seat with 3.09 left. Kaitu'u in. 19 and six now for Fowler. Her season high is 20. Career high is 35. Really does a great job of scoring the ball. Nice hands there by Sewell. Dumping in low. Nice. Great read and one. That's the way you dial it up. Sewell reading the cutter. Kai Tu taking the hit and scoring. Good vision and a great cut to the rim and a nice kiss off the glass by Kai Tu. They have not got that one two combination all game. That's really the first time that there's been a cut from the high post that's ended up with an easy two for Portland. Winter Blanchard with her first personal team's fifth. First miss from the charity stripe for the Pilots this game and still biggest lead of the game for Portland, 48-33. Just one of those nights for Portland State, Morales and Uhila. Uhila on that just needs to gather, take her time. Great job on the glass. Frawley passing up a shot, does not shoot much. Haley, so strong, and she'll go to the line. A little bit late whistle there, but a great take, and I love to see her aggressiveness inside in the paint. And, you know, a lot of times as a coach, uh, you know, somebody that's coming back from a knee injury will settle for jumples instead of getting to the rim like that, so that's a really nice sign. Good little hesitation, just so strong to the rim. So Winter Blanchard will get nicked for her second. Andrews is true from the charity stripe. First free throws of the day for Haley. And nine again, points. yep, nine points. Short there, but already a season high for Andrews. Welcome back, Haley. Morales, it's a good look, J Mo. It's one that she hits. Yeah, just in and out. A lot of her shots have gone in and out today. A little free throw line jumper she's had. One for six. Boy, how about Mia Uhila? I mean, that is just hard work. Take, taking contact. She'll go to the line. Bruno picks up her third. Great drive and just great balance in the air to get that shot off and kiss it off the glass. Take another look at it here, a little crossover. And that'll be Kai Tu, yep, with the foul. I feel this qu third quarter, Portland State's been way more aggressive, efficient. They look better offensively, not turning the ball over as much. Again, you know, Portland just doing such a good job of points in the paint. Well, you knew the Pilots had a huge size advantage, even without Cochran. Good hands, Lewis. Portland State doing a much better job of taking care of the ball, taking contact inside is McCartney. And I tell you, this team really believes they are not gonna quit. They're competitive, scrappy. I like this Portland State team a lot. What they endured last year, winless in conference play. Nobody transfers, everybody stays put, just gets better, keeps grinding. I like this Portland State team. Well, they have bought in, and there's a nice little reverse there by Fowler. 21 points now, season high for Alex. 
just puts the hard hat on, rolls up the sleeves. Sometimes it's pretty, sometimes it's blue collar. It doesn't matter. Yep. The flip is into the hands of the pilots. Here's Haley. Fowler running the floor. Mm. Kind bounce. Well done, Sewell. That's the second little free throw line jumper that she's had in the game. And we talked to Meek about her getting a few more minutes here with Lucy being out. Great opportunity for her to get, get going a little bit. McCartney. Late whistle again. So Sewell will pick up the foul. Team's seventh. Well, it's every time Portland State makes a little run, I think Portland's done a nice job of responding, getting easy looks. They've made three of their last three field goals, getting quality looks at the rim. McCartney, the transfer out of Northeastern. She's been a nice addition to this group. Mid-range game. I mean, she's a little bit undersized, but she can handle the basketball. She can shoot it a little bit. Nine points now for McCartney. One off of her season high against Fresno. Well done, Cinco. Easily the coolest first name on the floor. <laughs> Easily. Or at the broadcast oh, table. Nice. Look at the cut. Oh. Alex, not done. Quick hands, McCartney. Alex, what a great play by Fowler. And they got a short clock here, 0.6 on the clock. Look for one of those sneaky little out of bounds here. No looks for a little maybe alley-oop type of thing here for Fowler. Got a catch and release. Yeah. Oh, she called a foul on it. Wow. That's going to be two free throws. Wow. What a break for the Pilots as that shot clock buzzer goes off, coinciding with the foul called against Portland State. And when you're chasing, that's tough that's luck a, that's for tough the one. Vikings. So Portland State plays, is wondering, Fowler, was that foul or not? So Fowler, the announcement over the PA system, that last rebound for Alex sets the D1 UP record for rebounds for Alex Fowler, and she's not even close to being finished yet. No. I mean, she's going to be at the top of all the stat, stat categories by the time she's finished here. You're not kidding. You Just know, when, when, you, when you end the day for Fowler, she'll probably be the all-time leader in scoring and, you know, to add to it to the rebounding. Haley, she'll probably be the number one assist maker. Yep. And where she'll end up in terms of scoring, Haley as well. I mean, what those two together, what they have done for this program, unbelievable. They really have brought it back to life. You know, and they really, I think those two really started this trend of the Aussies you know, coming in and... So the officials <laughs> still trying to determine they're going to add just a breath to the third quarter. The foul is against Portland State, and Fowler will go to the line. Yeah, they're calling a hold on that as she's trying to go to the basketball on the catch. So she's going to go to the free throw line before this quarter ends with two free throws. It looks like they may have whistled McCartney for that foul. And Danielle Johnson still talking to the scorer's table and now walks away. So the third quarter officially not in the books yet. Chillinville. 
So Fowler, who is now the all-time D1 career rebounding leader at the University of Portland, will look to pad her scoring total, 757 rebounds and counting. And now Fowler will get two more tosses where going into these attempts, seven for seven from the free throw line, 21 points to go along with those seven boards. Boy, that was a long wait to get to this point. And it didn't bother Fowler one bit. Eight for eight. Fowler has been sensational. She's had a great night. Fowler knew she'd have to carry the freight without Lucy Cochran able to go with that foot injury. And Fowler, perfect from the line, nine for nine. She's got the 23 points just carrying the freight for the Portland Pilots. And the lead is 15 going into the fourth quarter. Pilots have dominated. Portland State is going to have to come up with some kind of magic trick. Fowler, season high, 23 points. She's a perfect nine for nine from the charity stripe. And Portland's all-time D1 rebounding leader with 757 and counting. Sensational. She's really done it at both ends of the floor tonight, too, I think, doing a nice job defensively. You know, if you're Portland State, you you have to go quick here and get quality looks. And you, I thought they did a much better job really playing Portland pretty even in that third quarter. Dump inside. McCartney putting the ball on the floor, drawing the foul. She stuck with it, did Cinco, and Fowler picks up that foul. Nice high-low look. Really just need to catch and go up with that one instead of putting it on the ground. Fortunate to pick up a foul here and go to the free throw line. They're going to give it to Kai Tulu instead. And she's got four now. Well, you see Frawley in a situation now, especially with Lucy out, a little foul trouble with Kai Tulu. She's going to end up playing the four spot a little bit for him. Fourth quarter, underway. If you're Portland, quality possessions, don't need to go fast, just get great looks offensively. And again, getting the ball inside has been very effective for them. Nothing there for Shear. 
McCartney's been tough on the boards. Pulls up, smart decision. Yep. Fowler, another rebound. Nearing another double-double is Fowler as Meek is short on that shot. And here comes McCartney. Doesn't have the numbers. Great job nice of pass. finding the wide open helper and Yesiki and you know, it was unfortunate that Portland State couldn't finish that. Really well done on the fast break transition play. Yeah, really nice pass. One-handed pass in transition. Nice to get it back out of bounds here, but that was a nice look by McCartney. 55-41. Biggest lead of the game has been 16. Well, nice strong move, just a little too aggressive. Fowler doing a nice job of just holding her ground. Ball goes inside, bodies up, took it right in the chest. She's been hit quite a bit uh, with the inside. I guess. Justice of Portland State. Oh, Gelly picks up her fourth foul. Alex has taken a beating, pretty play. Pilots can't convert. Good look by Andrews right there on the penetration. Ten on the shot clock for Portland State. Trailing 55-41 in the fourth. Morales draws the foul. She'll go to the line. Shear picks up her fourth, team's second. Morales a little upset with herself for not hitting that little jumper right there. Again, a shot that she normally makes. Doing a nice job. Little floater on the in the mid-range game there. Morales leads this club nearly 17 points a game, a couple of 20-point games. Three, five triple games, five, four triple games. I mean, she just fills it up, and it has just been tough sledding for yeah. the guard out of Spanaway. One of six from the field, and I think that they've done a much better job in this half, however, of taking her out of being the primary ball handler every single time down, and she has had more opportunities to score. Just hasn't, you know, shot it very well. I mean, she's on everybody's scout sheet. She and Lewis, what they do from beyond the arc, and it just hasn't happened tonight. Yep. Bruno circles out of danger. Plenty of time for Haley to set up the offense. Good short corner. Andrews, three-pointer. Ball knocked around into the hands of Morales. Here comes Portland State. It's a good look offensively, just didn't fall. If the Vikes can get a little run, there's a ton of time left in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's only a 13-point game. You hit a couple shots here and get some stops. You're right there in single digits. Schultz steps back, gets comfortable. Nice stick. Six points now for Sid over her seasonal average of four. Haley can't get it at the rim. There's been multiple opportunities for Portland, just a little bit short. NBA three. Yeah, that's what Lewis does. She's got deep range. I guess. And it's, it's within eight, like we were just talking about. Portland State can sag off of the three-point shooters, or at least the, the shooters in the three-point area for the Pilots, a team not known for shooting well from beyond the arc. You're absolutely right. And, you know, they haven't shot it well today. They've struggled in the last few minutes here, just short on, you know, transition layups, missed opportunities inside. And really the biggest spot, right, for Portland has been Fowler. She's just been absolutely tremendous. Fowler carrying this club with her 23 points. Lewis now has nine. She's eaten up a little bit. 55-47. Bike still in this thing. 6.44 left.
6.44 left to go in this game. The hometown pilots leading the hometown Vikings. 55-47, it's a crosstown rivalry. And thanks to Lewis getting hot from beyond the arc. She's got Portland State thinking, hey, we've got time. She's got three of the team's four three-point field goals, and they're on a 7-0 run to start this quarter. And you're right. You know, they've done a much better job of taking care of the basketball. They only have five turnovers in this half. And they're getting quality looks and getting stops where Portland's struggling to score right now. And if you're Portland, I say you go back to your bread and butter, and that's get Alex Fowler the ball. Ball's out of bounds for the Pirates. Fowler, though. On the bench. On the bench. That this won't last long. Lived, yeah. Sewell back and Schultz down. Sewell, the cutter, Burnham. Two on the shot clock. Burnham's got to put it up. Tough oh, shot. Oh, man. And ends the Portland State run, and the Pilots needed it. And she's got eight points, four rebounds. Kind of battled foul trouble all evening. Yeah, she's got the four fouls. Lead back to 10. 6-10 left to go. Not sure what Uhila was looking at, but the ball stays with Portland State. And if you're the Vikes, you gotta be thinking Lewis and Morales. Oh, good, good job by MJ Bruno. Boy, I'll say closing out quickly yep. on Lewis. Six now on the shot clock. Uhila has got to put it up. Ball knocked around and coming from that weak side is Morales. Flashing, scoring, McCartney. And that was all Morales getting an offensive board, keeping that play alive. Great swing and a nice cut. Season high, 11 points for McCartney. Career high, 11 points for McCartney for Portland State. Well done. There's that little back screen against the zone. Well, Burnham now in double figures. Schultz took a gamble and tried to make the pick, so it was a wide open layup for Burnham. She's got 10. Teams trading baskets. Well, and a good response, I think, from Portland out of that timeout. Nice look. Great cut. Schultz just tips it back to Morales. A little floater is good. And again, they're not going to go away. They compete. They play hard. I they're like very this. very scrappy. Yep, I like this club, J-Mo. Yep. And they're just going to get better and better. You know, they're picked last in the big sky, but this team is better than that. Do the Vikes have a stop in them? because now they've got to have a few stops. Andrews, great job by Morales. Haley never saw her coming. Yeah, just smart coming from the backside there. Gets the steal. Big possession right here. Boy, wide open was Uhila, but couldn't score. Yeah, just way too easy of a look. Yeah. Again, that, that mid-range of the zone right there in the paint, you do not want to give easy looks like that. Fortunate that that didn't go down for the Vikings. That would have been a huge basket. Mm. Instead, Lewis picks up her third foul, team's second, and Fowler back on the floor for the stretch run. And they're going to come with their little 1-2-1-1, one, 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 trying to make something happen, create traps, try to create a turnover. Burnham there it is. loses Step the handle. Uh-oh, oh. look out. Almost Morales tracks one. it down. Uhila whips it. Portland State looking for a good three. Maybe not. Winter Blanchard can't find it. Boy, if I'm Portland State, I want Lewis and I want Morales touching that ball. Yep. Fowler. And that's you what bet. you want That is Portland. money, money. You, you give Fowler too, too deep a position like that, it's over. 25 points now for Fowler, a season high. Lewis had been hot from beyond the arc. They gotta find her again. Catch, shoot. Pretty good look. 
Frawley just muscles that rebound. And the Pilots making three straight field goals just will not let Portland State get any closer than seven or eight. Well, the thing that's been nice is their response to the Portland State run. And again, Smart going inside right there to Fowler. Fowler they can't stop her. Fowler just nudges her opponent out of the way and sells the foul, she'll go to the line. So Witter Blanchard thought she had good position, but Fowler would have none of it. Yep. Just so strong and versatile. Again, I think standing behind her and getting that, giving her that deep a position in the paint is very dangerous. 10 for 10 now for Fowler. Career high for free throws made, 12 for Fowler. Wow, what a game for Alex Fowler. Perfect from the free throw line. 27 points, eight boards. Just dominant without Lucy Cochran, her wing woman down low with that foot injury. There is Lewis, that's why you want her shooting that ball. And that's her spot, she loves that corner three and Portland State doing a nice job of finding her in the open court. 12 points now for Lewis, four triples, and that's what she does, multiple triples every single game. Quick release like we talked about, and just does a nice job of getting her feet set, quick trigger, and a nice looking jumper. So Lewis had but three points at halftime, and she's carried the freight for Portland State in the second half. Yeah, and again, I just think, you know, they've done a really nice job at times of getting quality looks. They're not turning the ball over like they were. They're competing. It's the growth of this young group. You know, I I've had an opportunity to see them play multiple times. And, you know, last year at this time, they would have just kind of quit, I think, and not played as hard. And they're really sticking to it. Like I said, the culture that they're creating, they really have bought in. And they've got some talent on the squad. The next win for Portland State will equal the number of wins they had last year, and we're mid December. We're not even mid December. Right. So, you know, you you got to tip your cap to Chelsea Gregg, who feels like a lifer with Portland State as an assistant, an associate head coach, and now the boss of the Vikings. And I'm telling you, they are headed in the right direction. They really are. You know, it's about recruiting, getting some different pieces in here, maybe a little bit more size. They've got great guard play. I thought their post players had done a nice job for the most part offensively today. Up but next, go ahead, J-Mo. They are heading in the right direction. You are absolutely right. New Mexico State up next for Portland State. And how about the Pilots opening up conference play coming up? It's coming up real quick next Saturday. Oh, Haley. Oh, Haley. That's the old there Haley she Anders, is. baby. Look at the grin on her face, too. That's awesome. We've seen glimpses of that in the last three games and a couple plays here and there. I'll go, ooh, there she is. And right now, she just seems really comfortable. Look at that. And she loves contact. This kid just loves contact. She dares you to bring the body. Big board offensively by Shear. 11 points now for Haley Andrews. Again, a season high after missing so much of last year with that blown ACL. Mismatch. Oh, good hands, Portland State. Looking for some help. Buck 50 left to go in this game. Slipping it. Well run play, O'Gelly with the hoop. Yeah, nice little tee up there. Nice find and a good finish. Eight points now for O'Gelly over her seasonal average of five. Yeah, she's done a nice job today of, I think, both offensively and defensively being a contributor. So there it is right there. Picks up the offensive foul. Wow. So that'll be it for Burnham. She fouls out. And Meek will check back in. Burnham today just, I don't think, could get into an offensive flow with just the foul trouble. And O'Galley doing a nice job of just holding the ground, taking the charge.
Portland State's season low for made threes is five. That's where the Vikes are sitting right now. Floater not there, ball up for grabs. Gosh, she's had so many of those, just kind of in and out all yep. day long. Foul is going to go against McCartney, trying to swipe from behind. Her second, fifth team foul on Portland State. So Andrews looking to tack on to her season high in terms of points. Two for four now from the charity stripe. Gets them both. 13 points for Haley, season high. Well, just the more minutes she gets in a row, the more comfortable she's gonna get in rhythm and just about the right time with season coming, conference play coming up. Nice hustle rebound. I like the, the, the play of Ogele, the sophomore out of Chicago. Now, Morales will be whistled for that foul. But I think uh, Portland State will build from this as they go up against New Mexico State next. And if you're the Pilots, what are you taking away with this victory? Well, I think they really, you know, they did a much better job of getting the ball inside, but they really, I think, need to focus on perimeter play because, you know, it comes conference play, they start double teaming, taking Fowler away a little bit. Somebody else is gonna have to step up and hit a jumper. And they just need a little bit better perimeter scoring, I think, to collectively kind of have that inside-outside attack. So conference play begins for the Portland Pilots. San Diego, then BYU at home. You needed this win today. You needed this one. Yeah, they really did because of, you know, like we talked about, putting the 40 minutes together. The other night against Washington State, I really felt, like I said, that first quarter, they played so well, shared the ball. And then just as the game went on, Washington State elevated their intensity level. They just didn't go with them, exposed them a little bit with some things. But, um, and at Washington State, that's a very good ball club. Don't get me wrong. But I just, I think, you know, I think they thought they let one get away. And that would have been a big win for him. And what can you say about Alex Fowler? She's just so versatile. She can score in so many ways. And I mean, I, I love the kid. I, I've been impressed with her from day one. And she just does everything for him. Defends, rebounds. She's, you know, gosh, she's on the front of the press a lot of the time. So, I mean, when you have your four player that basically runs the floor and is your main person in the trap in the, in the press, you know, good things are happening. And obviously, I mean, she's an all-conference player the last three years in a row, and there's a reason for it. Final seconds on the shot clock. The pick, and now final seconds of the game. I, I do think they're going to go back and look at, you know, obviously you want to learn from film, but Maybe a few minutes, two turnovers if you're Portland at times. Pilots wanted to get to, to the free throw line and they did just that. 19 for 22, those 19 made free throws, ties a season high. And those are the things, you know, you, we love the buckets and we love the threes and all that. You yep. get to the free throw line and make hay, you're gonna win ball games. You absolutely are. And they've done a nice job of shooting at a high clip today. Andrews keeps the free throw pra parade going. So a season high now and made free throws for the Portland Pilots. What a game for Andrews. She's back. Again, up next for the Pilots. WCC play opening with San Diego and BYU coming to town. And that'll do it, the final 71-56, Portland.
A uh, great, great individual performance by Alex Fowler. Very impressed with the fact that Portland State made adjustments in this second half, played much better. Um, I think both teams are going to take some very positive things from this game going into next week. And, you know, they've got a week here off, basically, until they play again, which gives them a little bit of chance to heal. And uh, I think right now, you know, Portland's in a good spot. they got a lot of depth. And if they get these people back injury-wise, they're going to be a really tough team come conference play. Alex Fowler with 27 and 9 becomes the all-time career leader in D1 play in rebounding for the Pilots. Just has done it all since day one. She's just a tremendous athlete. She's so versatile. I mean, I say that all the time, but she really is. You know, she's expanded her game to the three-point range and just a terrific, terrific effort. And speaking of the great Alex Fowler, the great Brenna Green, we'll talk to her. Brenna? Yeah, and Alex, you are now the D1 leader in rebounds in this program's history, 759 and counting. How does that feel? Uh, that's insane, honestly. I didn't know that, but um, yeah, that's a really cool achievement, but um, I'm grateful my team. They helped me all the way to get that. You got another season and a half to go, so you're going to absolutely obliterate that record. Tonight, Lucy Cochran out. You had to step up down in the post, and you step up in a big way. Uh, 27 points, I believe. 11 of 11 from the line. Just how does it feel to show up for your team on a night like this? Um, I mean, again, credit to my team. I wouldn't be able to get the points I do without them giving it to me and finding the, finding the open shot for me to get. So that's all my team. Against WSU on Wednesday, you guys st struggled a little bit with containing their runs and responding to those runs. You guys were able to do that tonight. Uh, what was the key to that for your team? I mean, in the past, our, one of our biggest strengths is transition and running the floor. And I think tonight we really pushed it against uh, Portland State. Um, they're a really great team, but I think um, something that we worked on and we really tried to improve on was just the transition game. And I think our whole team did a great job at pushing the ball. Thanks so much, Alex. Back to you guys. Brenna, Alex, thank you so much. Appreciate it. What a game for Fowler. We come to expect that from Alex. Stats, J-Mo, what do you think? Well, did a, just a tremendous job of getting the ball inside, assist to turnover ratio. Both teams with 21 turnovers, but really I think the field goal percentage from the three-point line is the point of emphasis going into this next week for conference play. They've got to get some perimeter play from the jump shot position. And uh, I just thought a tremendous effort defensively turned Portland State over. I thought Portland State responded and did a much better job in the second half, but a great victory for the Pilots. You know, we mentioned things start getting real tight now in a great way because WCC play is a coming, and uh, that starts quickly. Yeah, you take a quick look. We talked about it. This, you know, first trip at home is San Diego and BYU, two very good ball clubs. Um, really have been in the top four for the last seven years, I would say, in the conference. Big, big opening weekend for them, and they've got to have a good showing. All right, so put this one in the books. Portland taking care of Portland State, 71-56. Satisfying win for the Pilots. Still dealing, you know, with that upset loss. They were upset with themselves with that loss against Washington State, but not tonight. Up next, Portland Winterhawks hockey.